The stem cells are unique cells in the body with the remarkable ability to divide and differentiate into various specialized cell types. They play a vital role in tissue repair, regeneration, and maintaining the body's overall health. However, as individuals age, the functionality and quantity of stem cells can diminish, leading to stem cell exhaustion. Contrary to popular belief, or what you might read on social media, stem cells do persist throughout adulthood and are not just present during the embryological development. These stem cells are responsible for replenishing damaged or dying cells in various tissues and organs throughout life. They are essential for tissue repair, regeneration, and maintenance of homeostasis. With age, the number of functional stem cells in the body declines. Additionally, the remaining stem cells experience a reduction in their regenerative capacity, which leads to diminished tissue repair and decreased organ function. The Hayflick limit, which we discussed earlier, also affects stem cells. Each time a stem cell divide, its telomeres shorten. Even with the enzyme telomerase, this does not always overcome the shortening process. It simply delays how long it takes for these telomeres to shorten. Eventually, when they become critically short, the cell can no longer divide effectively, leading to stem cell exhaustion. Stem cells can accumulate genetic mutations and damage over time. This results in genomic instability and affects their ability to function. Stem cells may also become less efficient at migrating to sites of tissue damage or injury, further hampering the body's regenerative abilities with age. So there's a few different areas I want to talk about in relation to this hallmark. The first is one we've discussed earlier, and it is through the utilization of Yamanaka factors. By inducing pluripotent stem cells, it is believed that these stem cells can help replace those cells lost through regenerative therapies. It's why I'm so passionate about regenerative medicine and what it can accomplish in the future. A major player in this field is Reordain Technologies. Headed by Neil Reordain, the company makes use of umbilical cord-derived mesenchymal stem cells to treat a range of disorders. A number of notable recipients of this treatment include former UFC champion TJ Dillashaw and even Mel Gibson's father, Huntington Gibson. Hunton Gibson, coincidentally, lived to 102. Neil Reordain has previously featured on the Joe Rogan podcast with Mel Gibson to talk about the experience. I also know that Joe Rogan himself previously suffered a torn rotator cuff muscle. Exactly which one, I could not tell you. He was informed by his doctor that it would require surgery. Instead, he flew down to Panama and had stem cell treatment, which, according to his own words, completely healed his shoulder and restored its function. In the process of creating this video, I was actually sent a research article by some of the lovely people over at the Lifespan.io Discord. It pertained to research conducted by the University of Adelaide for the treatment of osteoarthritis. They found that treatment with fibroblast growth factor 18 stimulated the proliferation of gremlin 1 cells in joint cartilage when they used it in test mice, leading to a significant recovery of cartilage thickness and a reduction in arthritis. This area is of particular interest to me, as my mother recently had to go in for a knee surgery operation. She reports that after the operation, she is in even more pain than before, and it is looking likely that she will need further treatment in the not too distant future. If I were not a poor duckling, I would have sent her off for stem cell treatment. But I am a poor duckling, and stem cell treatments are still absent in most countries around the world. At the time of making this video, I find myself halfway through medical school. The other videos you will find on this channel are projects made during my studies, and why they tend to be so short and lacking in depth, as I often only have a day, maybe less, to put them together. My experiences thus far have been nothing short of disheartening. I think I had a very romantic idea of a doctor coming in as the hero, saving lives and saving the day, but that is not what happens in the majority of the cases. Of course you get those moments where one's quick thinking saves a patient from sepsis or prevents them from bleeding out, but so often we are taught about how to manage symptoms rather than how to cure diseases, so that people can try to live some semblance of life with a chronic condition. I can't help but think that surely we can do better than this. 
A lot of the reservations involving stem cells in the past have been political. I can empathise with this concern, as in the past, fetal stem cells were often harvested from aborted fetuses. But the mesenchymal stem cells used by places like Reordain Technologies do not use fetal stem cells. Mesenchymal stem cells can be harvested from adult bone marrow and adipose tissue. The most effective of these stem cells are taken from umbilical cord tissue, placentas and amniotic fluid. These stem cells do not require the destruction of the fetus or embryo. A baby is delivered healthy, whilst these stem cells can still be acquired. So I really struggle to understand why there is still so much pushback on it, when we have known about them for over a decade and just how effective they can be. It saddens me that effective treatments are being delayed for no good reason. No one wants another thalidomide incident, I understand, but the research here is sound and the treatments already exist. How long was I in there? About five minutes. Why are we not funding this? So I want to end this segment with some quotes from Jia Ng, the lead researcher at the University of Adelaide study, as I agree with every word she has to say. Current treatments for osteoarthritis are very much a band-aid approach. The findings of our study reimagine osteoarthritis not as wear and tear conditions, but as an active and pharmaceutically reversible loss of critical articular cartilage stem cells. With this new information, we are now able to explore pharmaceutical options to directly target the stem cell population that is responsible for the development of articular cartilage and progression of osteoarthritis. Known comorbidities of osteoarthritis include heart, pulmonary, kidney disease, mental and behavioural conditions, diabetes and cancer. Our study suggests that there may be new ways to treat the disease rather than just the symptoms, leading to better health outcomes and quality of life for people who suffer from osteoarthritis. <laughs>